No fanfare. Oh, well, guess I'll have to make it myself. Ahoy hoy everyone! So in a couple weeks the Eurovision Song Contest 2015 is going to be taking place and if you're like I go with 90% of the people who are watch who are seeing this in your Facebook news feed or on YouTube. My guess is that you have no idea what that is. So I put a link to a video that my fellow Eurovision web reviewers overthinking it uh, did before the 2013 Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, most of the information there is still in is still in date, but it's a nice explanation of what's going to be going on. And this year, I thought I would do a few videos to let you know what's going on with each of the songs, what they're how they're going to do at the contest, I think, and what they're like, that kind of thing. Uh, so today I'm going to be starting with some songs from the first semi-final, and I'm going to start with the eight that songs that I think are pretty solidly in for qualification. Uh, before I begin, I would also like to note that the, the opinions expressed in this video are not what I think should happen, but what I think will happen. In fact, two of the four songs that I'm putting down for definitely qualifying uh, probably wouldn't make it into the final if I were making the decisions for Eurovision. So let's get started with Estonia. So there are four songs in the first semi-final this year that I think are pretty darn safe for qualification and are absolutely going to make it in to the point where there's pretty much no case against them. Uh, and the first one is Estonia. Uh, the song is called Goodbye to Yesterday, and it's a duet between Elina Born and Stig Odesta. Uh, Stig is a very well-known songwriter in Estonia, and he's uh, he's grown very, very popular over the years, and they won their national selection for Eurovision uh, in a pretty solid landslide. Uh, so the song is a nice uh, alt-indie ish duet uh, between the two, and it's about regretting leaving someone uh, probably after a one-night stand, I think. I haven't really dug too, too much into the lyrics, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, so this is definitely going to make the final. Uh, the song has received an unbelievable amount of buzz. It's one of the top five favorites according to the betting odds, and it has a lot of really vocal fans, and it'll probably get the votes of a lot of the neutrals since it's not a typical Eurovision-esque song. Uh, it's going to be performing seventh between uh, Greece and Macedonia, which, as I'll get to later, is probably a pretty good slot in the running order given the chances that those two songs have of qualifying. Uh, so moving on, let's go to Russia next. Moving over to my desk now to talk about Polina Gagarina, A Million Voices, and Russia. Uh, so Russia are another country that I'm definitely putting down for qualification. Uh, the song is a nice, inoffensive, mid-tempo, uh, I describe it as almost a Katy Perry uh, style number. Uh, and Polina Gagarina is very, very well known in uh, not just Russia, but in uh, all the countries surrounding Russia, so her uh, celebrity status will definitely garner a few uh, or a lot of points from uh, those countries, as well as the nice balladry of it will probably earn it some uh, points from the juries. So I'm definitely putting that down as a definite qualifier. Uh, Russia are also in a really, really good running order spot. They're right before a commercial break, so that's a sign from the people who did the running order at the EBU that they probably have faith that nothing could really follow Russia except a commercial break, which is a nice vote of confidence uh, from there and also a chance for the song to sink into people's minds and help them consider it and get it into the final. Uh, so that's another one I'm definitely putting down for qualification. Third on my list to waltz into the final easily is Albania. Uh, now Albania is represented by uh, El Haid Adani, uh, who, who won uh, the version of The Voice in Italy. Uh, Italy are not voting in the semi-final though, so that's not points in the semi. Uh, and her song is called I'm Alive, it's this up-tempo number, it's really exciting, and it's a really not just a very strong vocal, but a very showy vocal, uh, which will definitely earn it a lot of points from the juries. Uh, and it's also um, nice, and it's also really catchy and up-tempo, and has already been getting some play, uh, plus El Haida Dani is really well known, not just in Albania, but in uh, the but in the large, but in the rather large swaths of Albanians who are living abroad, uh, so that will probably earn her some points. Just also, much like Polina, uh, on the fact that she's super well known. Uh, but I also contend that this is going to get a lot of the votes of the neutrals because it's been getting radio play even here in the U.S. Uh, Jenna Marbles from YouTube actually tweeted about the song, which is super super rare to hear anything about Eurovision in the U.S. Uh, so I definitely have faith that this is going to qualify and is maybe a dark horse for a victory on the night of the final. 
last and fourth on fourth on a list of songs that are definitely qualifying in my mind uh, is Belgium, who are represented by Loïc Noté. Sorry about my French pronunciation. I learned Spanish in school, not French, and my French pronunciation as a result is horrendous. But anyway, moving on. The song is called Rhythm Inside. It's an upbeat, uh, very striking number. Uh, Shades of Lord in it, a lot of people have been saying, myself included. Uh, and I was actually going to put Georgia or Finland in Belgium's place uh, on this part of the list, but uh, Loïc performed on the Belgian version of The Voice last night, and the cinematography was really striking, his vocals were really on point, and it just all really came together in a way that, well, that your, to which uh, your episoders will really respond. It's a little earlier in the show, uh, but I highly, highly doubt that it's going to be forgotten uh, come voting time, and the juries are going to be looking for a chance to make Eurovision seem as relevant as possible, and someone who uh, has shades of the of one of the biggest pop stars in the world right now is a really easy way to do that. Uh, plus, I think a lot of the people who listen to a, who listen to a lot of pop radio but don't aren't really expecting a whole lot from Eurovision are going to be drawn to the weirdness and the catchiness of the number. So I definitely think this is getting a spot in the final as well. So now we're going to move on to the countries that are probably going to make the final but may run into a roadblock or two on their way into there. And we're going to start with Georgia. Now, Georgia are being represented by Nina Sublati with her song Warrior. It's this really striking, strong, catchy, epic sweep uh, uh, up-tempo number about uh, strength and uh, passion, and apparently it tells the story of uh, of women in Georgia and the role that they have played in the history of the country. Uh, and it's performing last, which is always going, which is always a really nice boost at Eurovision because that means that you're going to be right fresh in the voters' minds. Uh, Nina has been performing the song live pretty darn well consistently. Uh, the one obstacle into which it's going to run is that angry songs at Eurovision, and this is very much a song with aggression uh, tend to be underrated pretty consistently compared to their quality. Uh, last year, I'm still not over May Fine Gold not making the final, uh, who came out swinging literally. There was a shot of her swinging, there were shots of her swinging swords in the music video uh, telling this very angry and aggressive story and didn't even come close to qualifications. So that's where I'm a little worried that Georgia might trip up. But I still think that they should probably make it given how great a live singer she is and the fact that they're, that they're performing last. Next up on the list for me is Finland. And now Finland are being represented by uh, Perti Kurikannimi Paivat, uh, who are singing the song Anamun Pita. And it is the first time that punk is being represented in earnest on the Eurovision stage. We've had uh, Stop Shish Sob and uh, Polo Punk, but they were both some punk crossover, sort of. Uh, so this is the first time that just a really true hardcore punk song is being represented. It kind of has shades of the Los Angeles part of the punk movement, uh, which I personally really like. I know I said I wouldn't editorialize, but I am, sorry. Uh, and anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be in because they have a very, very large number of defenders, uh, and they're, they've been getting a lot of word of mouth from people who wouldn't otherwise be interested in Eurovision. Uh, but they're going to run into a couple problems. Uh, firstly, I think they're going to have problems earning the votes of the juries, uh, who may be a little put off by the song the first time since it's so, so different from anything else in the... Uh, uh, in the show, and second, I worry that Finland might have might have a situation where they have a song that really appeals just to Finland, uh, and I don't know if people in in other countries are going to uh, are going to be fans of a genre very very closely associated with uh, Finland and not a whole bunch of other places in Europe, especially places that are voting in the final uh, on the actual night. Moving on to the song Face the Shadow, which is representing Armenia, uh, and Armenia are represented by a supergroup consisting of artists uh, from all over the world, uh, one from each of uh, what uh, from each of what the European education system considers the five inhabited continents, as well as Armenia, and uh, it's a waltzy, ballady, not quite... I'm going to be honest, this one's really hard to describe just because there's so much going on. There are six singers all on stage, all singing at the top of their lungs from very different styles, and it can either sound really great or really terrible. And in most of the rehearsal footage, it sounded really, really striking and great and powerful. Uh, so I think it will definitely qualify. And additionally, a song that appeals by its very nature to people from the diaspora is not a bad way. Is not a bad way to go uh, when there are, when there are a lot of people who are in the Armenian diaspora throughout Europe. Uh, and 
this song may run into a couple problems anyway. It still might be terrible, even if it sounded great uh, most in most of the rehearsals, and it also is in the number two slot, which at Eurovision is known as the death slot. It's felled a lot of fan favorites uh, before the show, including May Fine Gold, who received a mention earlier in the video, uh, but I still think it's pretty solidly on the list of qualifiers. Eighth on the list of probable qualifiers is Romania, uh, who are being represented by the band Voltage with the song De La Caput, uh, which, in, which when translated into English uh, means from the beginning, but the English title of the song is all over again. It's a bilingual pop rock number. Uh, the video tells the story of a young boy who is left behind by his parents who have gone to work in Vienna, uh, and well, he stays behind in Romania, and it's a very, very, very sad video. Uh, but anyway, uh, Romania probably got the best allocation draw of any country in the contest, uh, and it has both its neighbors and a whole bunch of its diaspora centers, uh, like Spain, uh, voting in the semifinal, and also position as late in the show as it is doesn't hurt because it's second to last. Uh, but I'm actually wor a little worried about the running order position because Albania and Georgia are both really, really interesting songs, and it's right between them, and I worry that Nina and Al Haida are going to blow this completely to smoke. Uh, and yeah, so that makes up the list of the eight songs that I think are definitely into the final. Uh, I posted links to all the songs so that you can give them a listen and let me know what you think in the comments. And I cannot wait for Eurovision. This first semifinal is happening on May 19th, second on May 21st, and the final is on May 23rd. So I'll see you there.